Well, everyone, let's go ahead and talk about the LG V40 and see how this thing holds up in 2021. Now, one of the biggest things that's have changed recently is that LG is no longer a phone manufacturer. They retired pretty much from making phones. And I think this is a pretty interesting thing. I think it's not long overdue, but I was pretty sad about it. You know, the LG V40 was not the last phone they made, but one of the last ones, I would say, towards the ending of their life cycle. And I like the V40. You know, I think overall it was a good phone, but it just seemed like LG was kind of more focused on a lot of these, you know, gimmicky features. We saw things with the G7, with the G8, with the G5 even, and these things that just never have stood the test of time just kind of interfered with their whole entire life cycle, in my opinion. But the V40, I mean, if you want to pick it up, I'll leave this phone and maybe some other phones I'd recommend this here down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, looking on the front of the V40, you can see that we do have that 6.4 inch P OLED display. Display. It's a 1440p panel and overall it's a very good looking panel in my opinion. This phone came out in 2018 so it's almost three years old, not quite three years old yet, but about two and a half years old. And this is a very good looking panel in my opinion. Of course, it has the notch up top. It has a little bit of bezel around it. It's not like the best looking panel, no super high refresh rate or anything, but overall, I think it's a pretty solid panel. And I think it's more of an asset than a con in my opinion. Obviously you have USB type C, you have a micro SD card slot on this phone as well. And overall, I think those are really those two things, obviously in the USB type C port of your phone has USB C, but micro SD card, that is a very awesome thing and i loved seeing that on this type of device you also have ip certification which is another pretty big you know asset you know it it's not like you can drop it and you know it won't break but it's one of those things where if you get some dust if you get some water on it it's a little bit more durable which is something i love seeing on these types of phones now on the back you do have that standard glass back which feels really good still i mean again this is another one of those devices that will always feel premium it has a good half to it and it's a good size it's a big phone you know for the most part you have that fingerprint sensor on the back as well and you do have that triple camera setup as well which again is another pretty big asset for this type of device overall on the outside though it feels very good it looks fairly you know fine still it's not the like best looking phone in the world and it's not the best feeling phone but it gets the job done and it feels pretty much above average in my opinion now hitting on the cameras this phone like i mentioned triple camera setup 12 megapixel standard lens 12 megapixel telephoto lens and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor so what does this mean? This essentially shows us that this specific device has a very well-rounded camera set. You know, whether you're starting off, whether you want to get a really good, you know, standard lens, whether you want to get that, you know, zoom in feature, you can zoom in a lot with this camera, or you want to get that 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor by zooming out a lot, you have that capability here. And LG's cameras have almost always been really good. I think, you know, they've had really good sensors throughout their whole entire life cycle and 4K at 60 on this phone, 1080p up to 240, which is kind of random, but you have that capability on this phone which as i mentioned before is another pretty big asset for sure on top of this on the front you do have a dual camera setup this time around an 8 megapixel standard lens and then a 5 megapixel wide angle lens so a little bit of a difference right there not something that we're all used to with multiple camera setups on the front hopefully we do get into a phase where that starts to happen because it's one of my favorite things but this specific phone does have that dual camera setup on the front but only 1080p video on the front i don't think it's that big of a deal again this phone came out in 2018 but it would have been cooler if we had 4k on the front even 4k at 30 would have been perfectly fine for me but again only 1080p i think it's you know time to switch it up a bit but lg is not making phones anymore so it doesn't really matter but in terms of the camera i think it's probably a strong suit the software is great for these cameras it's not great in general but i think it's a pretty good camera for sure and it still holds up the test of time in 2021 now moving on to i think probably the worst area of this phone in my opinion is probably the software you know the build quality of the cameras are great but the software is the thing that i just think if lg knocked it out of the park more people would buy it and you look at a phone manufacturer like oneplus they don't have the best phone Phones in the world they're not like the most well-rounded devices but their software is the thing that i think keeps them afloat for a majority of people including me now with this phone with lg's ui it's just something I'm not really in love with. You know, I've used it for years. I used to own a G2 as my everyday device and I didn't like the software. You know, I switched over to a custom ROM and I can tell you with the V40, it's no different. You know, it just seems like LG's never really learned. They take a note, I think from Huawei and I don't know if they are collaborated with each other or whatever, but their softwares seem very similar in my opinion, very kind of, you know, different from stock Android. And it's almost like a different version of One UI. You know, it just, I don't really understand what they're trying to do, but it's 
doesn't really matter because they're not making phones anymore, but it started off with Android 8. It went all the way up to Android 10, which I'm really happy to see. But for the most part, I mean, it's what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. The software is, you know, pretty much outdated already. Not quite, but within the next year, by the time this video, by the time you're watching this video, it may already be outdated. Who knows? But the software is one of those things that I'm not a huge fan of, in my opinion. On the same merit, actually, you know, the battery life was one of those things, too, that wasn't really amazing, a 3,300 million power battery. But the thing is, is that when you have that big of a phone with that big of a screen and with this type of performance, you're going to need, like... <laughs> as big of a battery as possible. Now the 3300 million power, it's not a small battery by any means, but it definitely isn't like something you would brag about, you know? And at this time, it, it's not like a crazy big battery in my opinion. So especially with phones like a Galaxy S9 Plus that had bigger battery sizes at that year, another pretty big note for sure. And the Galaxy S10 Plus just came out like not even like four or five months after this device. So take it as you will, but that's pretty much how I would kind of sum up the probably one of the worst aspects of this phone. Now, handing it off with the performance, this device Device and does have that Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset and pretty much two models of this phone but both those models had six gigs of RAM. Now the performance side of things as I always say I mean it was a pretty decent performing phone and definitely not the best performing phone I had in 2018. I felt like that may go for like the Pixel of that year. I think the Pixel 3 was really good performing and obviously with the Galaxies and Notes and stuff but the LG V40 I think you know it, it kind of hit that sweet spot you know I, I think it was a good performing phone. I think it was very limited by the software. I think that was one of the bigger disadvantages of this phone but on top of that when you have a phone like a v40 you want it to be you know the the best of the best you want to get a good phone and this phone's performance i think is actually not that bad it's it's really decent so if you're doing like basic tasks obviously it's going to be able to be fine you know nothing's going to happen there if you take it up a notch obviously things are going to change a little bit you know if you want to play these big heavy intensive games one of the problems that i had with this phone was that it would heat up like crazy all the time so even if i had just like rebooted this this phone if I was like going through something it would heat up if I was playing a you know game or something it would heat up quite a bit and I think that's one of the bigger disadvantages of this phone is that it does heat up you know quite a bit so if you're not comfortable with it if you don't like a phone that you know heats up in your hand then obviously this is not the phone for you it isn't as bad as something like a Galaxy S4 but it's still a pretty you know it, it gets heated up pretty fast if you ask me but regardless of that I think overall this phone's performance is a positive and I would probably recommend it to people you know at the end of the day so so in terms of that that's kind of how it sum up the performance standpoint and to kind of sum up this video and answer the question should you go and buy an LG V40 in 2021 well this is pretty much what I'll tell you you know I think the LG V40 is pretty much not worth it in 2021 anymore you know I, I don't think it's a good phone to pick up and I would probably recommend a majority of you to stay away from this type of phone if I'm being completely honest I think this phone had a lot of capability at the time it came out but the fact that LG is now done making phones this is the biggest limiting factor the V40 isn't even that bad of a phone but LG is done making you know done making phones they did promise that they're going to push some more updates for a couple other phones here and there but the lg lineup is essentially done so we're not going to be getting any more phones from them so there really isn't any point of getting a v40 because you know you're not going to be getting that much support from this device anymore so that is a pretty big disadvantage from this type of phone again i would have loved to seen you know maybe a little bit more of an improvement you know lg switching over to stock android something like what they did with the nexus at a certain point when they were managing the nexus lineup but it doesn't look like that's going to ever be the case so that's essentially it but i would recommend phones like a oneplus 7 a oneplus 7 pro a samsung galaxy s10 and s10 plus i would even recommend a galaxy s9 to some people probably not to everyone but maybe some people would be okay with a phone like that even though it's outdated essentially the galaxy s9 and the lgv40 ended off with the same software version so take it as you will but i think that's kind of how it's some of this specific device i don't think it's worth it anymore but to some people it may be but i would probably recommend everyone to stay away from it in my opinion so in terms of that that pretty much covers it up if you guys have any other questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then